payload on STS-83 is the Microgravity Science Laboratory, a pressurized module in Columbia's payload bay. We're going to take a tour now of the MSL-1 Space Lab. Hello, my name is John Heckel, and I'm the payload operations engineer for STS-83, the Microgravity Science Laboratory. We're standing inside the orbiter processing facility, and what you see over my shoulder is the Microgravity Science Laboratory inside the orbiter's payload bay. The Microgravity Science Laboratory weighs about 10 tons. It's 23 feet long and about 13 feet in diameter. It only takes up about a third of the orbiter's payload bay. And the way the astronauts get from the crew module into the space lab module is they travel through this long tunnel you see here. Space Shuttle Columbia on the pad was the first in the shuttle fleet, arrived at KSC in March of 1979, and the first launch was from Pad A, same pad as we're using today, on April 12, 1981. It deployed the first satellite in the space shuttle program on STS-5 and then flew the first space lab mission on STS-9. Columbia is named after a small sailing vessel that was based in Boston Harbor in 1792. And another one of Columbia's claims is that it brought back the long duration exposure facility from space after almost six years in space. Here we see our commander, Jim Halsell. And Jim Halsell has flown previously on STS-65 and STS-74. Here's our pilot, Susan Still, the second female pilot to fly the space shuttle, graduate of Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University locally in Daytona Beach. Janice Voss, our payload commander on this mission. She's logged more than 18 days in space. This is her third space shuttle flight, having flown on STS-57 and STS-63. And mission specialist number three, or rather uh, payload specialist number one, I'm sorry, Roger Crouch will be responsible for much of the science operations on board the microgravity space lab. This is his first space shuttle flight. Mike Gernhardt, mission specialist number two, and also our flight engineer for STS-83. Here's Greg Lynn Tiras. Payload specialist number two, his first flight into space, also responsible for much of the science on board the microgravity science laboratory. Here's Don Thomas, once again, mission specialist number three. We're standing by now to come out of this two-hour built-in hold in just a few moments. Coming out in four, three, two, one. We're now at T-minus three hours and counting. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus two hours, 58 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. And we see the STS-83 crew has just left the suit-up room, headed for the elevator. Be 
heading down to from the third floor to the first floor aboard the astronaut Dan for the 20 minute ride out to pad 39A. Meanwhile, out at the launch pad, the final inspection team has just reported that their activities are complete and they're leaving the pad. And in just a moment, we should see the, the crew, many KSC employees and well-wishers waiting to greet them as they come out of the elevator. And here they come. than usual contingent of uh, employees wishing them well. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus 2 hours, 37 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. The astronauts have arrived at the 195-foot level of the fixed service structure where the orbiter access arm is located. And the commander and pilot will walk across the arm shortly to begin their boarding while the other crew members await their turn, either out on the arm or on the fixed service structure. And as we've been able to tell, they're thoroughly enjoying the very nice day out at the pad to take advantage of looking at Space Shuttle Columbia being prepared in the last hours here for flight. Check. MS-1, Entity, loud and clear, Janice. Good morning. Welcome aboard. Morning, John. Loud and clear here. All activities proceeding on schedule. We're not working any issues. Weather continues to be cooperative, at least at this point in time. At T-minus 59 minutes and counting, this is shuttle launch control. start the main engine helium perch sequence preparing for main engine start activities. TLS is go for perch sequence four. And now we'll be checking the flight controls on the orbiter, the aero surface uh, profile test. Vehicle will go to uh, internal power in about 10 seconds. Senior OTC, you have to verify here your reconfiguration complete. Yes, sir, that is complete. Thank you. Okay. Coming up on T minus 3 minutes 23 seconds, we're now gimbling the three main engines, checking their steering capability. Next 
next activity will be to pressurize the liquid oxygen tank on the external tank at T minus 2 minutes 55 seconds. And we'll start the retraction of the Gox beanie cap. DLT OTC has got a clear caution warning memory and verify no unexpected errors. Topping off of the fuel cells being terminated. Pressurizing the hydrogen tank on the external tank now. Replenishing the liquid hydrogen tank has been terminated. T minus one minute, 30 seconds. Standing by now to arm the sound suppression water system. T minus one minute. Solid rocket booster joint heater is being turned off. Final check now of the booster commands. Locks and LH2 fill and drain valves are closed. Payload bay vent doors are positioned. Standing by to hand off to Columbia's computers. CLS is going for auto sequence start. And the handoff has con occurred. Columbia's Computer is now controlling. 20. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. Rain safety systems armed. 10. 9. 8. 7. Ignition sequence start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with the Microgravity Science Laboratory our research bridge to the space benefits of tomorrow. Open the system. Roger, roll, Columbia. Houston's now controlling. Columbia is rolling on course toward a 160 nautical mile high. Orbit inclined 28 and a half degrees to Earth's equator. Columbia already traveling 300 miles per hour. back to two-thirds throttle to prepare the spacecraft to pass through the area of maximum air pressure and go supersonic. Altitude now two and a half miles, one and a half miles east of the launch pad. Columbia is traveling 650 miles per hour. Five seconds since liftoff. Flight controller standing by. Next a few seconds for burnout and jettison of the twin solid rockets. Booster officer confirms good separation of the solid rockets. Columbia performance is nominal. Copy performance nominal. That call indicating that Columbia's performance thus far is just as planned. Altitude now 34 miles. Columbia is traveling 3,000 miles per hour, 42 miles east of the Kennedy Space Center. 
Six and a half minutes since launch, two minutes to cut off of the main engines. Booster officer confirms cut off of the main engines. Columbia, we showed a nominal Miko. Ohms 1 is not required. You have a go for the photo DTO. Copy, go for the DTO.
And Columbia Houston, yes, Susan, you have a go to press that, to push that circuit breaker in. Columbia for tips activation. And good afternoon, Roger. Good to see you there. Roger's not on time yet, but I'll relay. And welcome to Space Lab, Janice. It's great to be here, Mark. My, there's a lot of space back here. This is Mission Control Houston. We continue to take live video through the high pack television system of the mid deck area of Columbia. In view, astronauts Don Thomas and Greg Lanteris, who are working uh, some photo documentation activities uh, with one of the protein crystal growth experiments. Columbia's currently approaching the west coast of South America. Well, we are live with you on TVC number one and uh, I wanted to ask you a question. We do see an image on the viewfinder above TVC number two, which we thought was inoperational. Uh, can you confirm that you are seeing an image or if uh, the quality of the image? Yeah, you guys have good eyes uh, to pick that up. Uh, we do have a good image up there, a good quality image on TVC uh, number two. The monitor is there. And when I came back from lunch, you know, just an hour, an hour and a half ago, that image was not there. So somehow we got it.
Space Lab for Express. Hey, Dorina, FO2, the checkout uh, of Experiment Power is complete and uh, everything looks good on Express. As you know, this is one of our premier facilities that will be flying on Space Station shortly in a few years here, and we'll have uh, up to eight of these up on board at any given time, and this is the first checkout of, of them, and everything is looking great on it so far. We're really excited about flying actually pieces of the space station on our shuttle flight. Space Lab, um, Step Bravo of FO4 is complete. Okay, we copy that, Greg. And when you're ready, um, I'll tell you what you're going to be doing. Okay, the igniter is glowing. I can see the soup bank. The igniter swung into position. The flame is there. We're way past the sit point. On one, and two, and on three. And okay, we're going down. Oh, it looks like we're finding a sit point. Oh no, we still can't find it. It's still sitting, and we're at the minimum flow rate. There's, we almost made it. One or two more clicks, and we would have been uh, below the sit point. We have a blue region uh, above the flame. Uh, the flame itself is glowing a lot of soot, and there's a break through about three quarters of the flame tip. It's very steady. Good sample in there. It's a uh, LF8 SCB1. for Greg. Um, BCE is happy with the pressure. He's impressed. Copy that. Now I'm closing. Good copy. Well, hang on. In Columbia, we're two minutes to the LOS. We'll be back with you at 2154, and we'll be off the tail until about 2208. Space after DC post stuff doesn't want to close. The only option under that little cursor thing is move. Okay, uh, select sample, and that should do it. And then select okay, yes. Work.
and then we're working out a small procedure for you to do an off nominal power down. Okay, Zig cleared a message, thanks, and I'll stand by. And just for your information on the configuration, you can see in the downlink the igniters are out and the needles are at the dispense position or the deploy position. And uh, per step two of the power down, switch two and one are now off. But all the three circuit breakers are on on the avionics package. The top of your head is in the jam sort of. I want to narrow down the uh, aperture. Oh. That's better. All right. Can you see yourself? No, uh, I can't even turn that on. Oh, there we go. Oh, so before it's right here, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. You sure wait now? No, I just got it done. So you're timing it. I did the 801 Pro, and I tried to get the 2 off. So I see it's out of uh, that, and back to FCS checkout. Uh, let's see, we're on the bottom of page 721. One thing you can see if you look out the right hand side is uh, how fast it appears that we're going. So we're actually going faster now than we were in orbit, we're way more. We're gonna start, it's going to start appearing like we're screaming. Right? What's our altitude now? The altitude now is right at 400,000 feet, 65 miles. And we're doing 18,000 miles an hour? Yeah, we're doing about 24.4 and a half or so. Above the stick. I thought I heard 27 on the pad. I think that was for everyone. Oh, okay. 15. Okay. Got my checklist right here.
Gear down. Gear down. 50 to 50. 40 to 40. 30 to 35. 20 to 30. 15 to 20. 5 to a 5. Touchdown. 195 shoot. 185 do rotate. Half. One. One and a half. One and a half. One and a half. Breaking nine. Nice landing. 120. Breaking seven. Break high cells are open. 100 knots. Breaking six. That was smooth, Jim. Right on the money, buddy. Thanks a lot. Trying the brakes here. Let's see if they grab. Just a little bit. Okay, 70, breaking 7. Go Shoots, jettison. Columbia, Houston, Energy, Ground Track, and NAV are go. So that uh, call from Mission Control indicating that Columbia is uh, right on course uh, with its uh, current speed and altitude and uh, ground track all right on target uh, for runway 33. This uh, view from uh, the Kennedy Space Center now showing Columbia as it approaches. Columbia's range to touchdown now, 68 miles. Actually, uh, 30, 38 miles. Speed uh, 790 miles per hour. Altitude 56,000 feet. The vehicle's been at about 1G for the past minute or so as it flew basically a straight line to hack intercept. Now as it rolls onto the hack, uh, the G level will increase a little bit. It'll be about one, Columbia. one and a half Gs. Got the on at the 180. To the deconditioned bodies of the astronauts, that one and a half Gs feels more like around three or four Gs uh, had they been in condition. Columbia is now performing a right uh, overhead turn to align with the runway with uh, 150 degrees left to go in that turn. Columbia's altitude 19,500 feet. Speed uh, 400 and 25 miles per hour. On at the 90. The mechanics officer reports landing gears down and locked. Main gear touchdown. The drag chute deploy. Nose gear touchdown. Houston. 
Columbia, welcome home. Your landing and deorbit look great. No post landing deltas. Copy that, Don. Thank you. Convoy vehicles are now moving in uh, toward Columbia. Columbia, Houston, we will be performing the hydraulic load test. Copy that. 